the Vanderford Glacier. This enormous ice sheet is slowly sliding into the Southern Ocean. Warming water is melting it from below, raising the global sea level. This is one of the most extreme environments on Earth, where the impact of climate change is the greatest. To truly understand what's happening here, you need a ship that can take you through the ice, so scientists can conduct critical research. To reach Antarctica, you need to get through this. Thick ice that would rip through most vessels. It's designed to actually push the ice downwards and break it. Jerry O'Doherty has been taking scientists to Antarctica for 20 years. He's seen the Vanderford changing up close. Some parts of the glacier have receded um, or broken away more accurately. Um, and other parts of the glacier actually seem to have advanced a little further out to sea. These are dangerous and uncharted depths, but getting closer to the ice allows for scientific discovery, including an enormous canyon on the ocean floor stretching underneath. One of the issues with Antarctic glaciers at the moment is them being eaten away from the underneath by warmer water coming down from the north. The height of this glacier has shrunk by two metres in just over a decade. If there is a deep channel under this glacier, then it's possible that that, uh, that may not bode well for the future of the Vanderford Glacier. This ship is really critical to understanding the changes of our planet at the moment. Rob King is studying the region's most important food source, Antarctic krill. These are the most abundant animals on Earth, supporting an entire ecosystem but global warming presents a threat. The krill are at risk from climate change because they have a vulnerability in that the acidification of the ocean can affect their egg hatch rate. If the krill population declined in the Southern Ocean, we'd see the big charismatic megafauna that we all associate with this region starting to suffer. Things like the blue whales and fin whales, which are going through a recovery now since the end of pelagic whaling, would really feel the effects of declining krill. Scientists need live samples to study what's really happening, but heavy trawl nets damage the fragile animal and are unreliable. Now, there's a safer alternative. Antarctic waters flood over a filter table through three holes in the ship's hull. Krill are carried inside with the water, scooped into buckets and taken to portable aquariums. More than 8,000 krill have been caught on this voyage and will now be studied in Australian labs. Our big ticket is trying to get them to spawn and do lots of uh, CO2 and temperature experiments on the eggs and look at that early development of krill larvae. Icebreakers must also support science on the continent, resupplying remote stations. It's a special Antarctic blend of diesel um, and it's about 1.1 million litres. Fuel flows from ship to shore through two kilometres of hose snaking across water and ice. The risks are enormous. Casey Station is home to an Adelie penguin colony. Icebergs that could puncture the hose are moved away as crew keep watch on the shore. As the fuel travels up the line, um, we just ensure that there's no uh, leaks of diesel or anything happening, um, any uh, faults or nicks in the line. This operation was a success, but that hasn't always been the case. And we have a team here that uh, works quite diligently, not only trying to refurbish the soil that was spoilt, but also looking at strategies of how we can manage you know, potential spills into the future. That's very important for us. Any accident would damage Australia's standing in the region. No single country owns Antarctica. A treaty ensures it's dedicated to science. But Australia maintains an historical claim to 42% of the land. There are now more than 80 international research bases on the continent, and Russia and China are active within our claim. The thing that this ship delivers is endurance in the Southern Ocean, 90 days of sea time, uh, and such a platform for long-range helicopters means we can operate as if it's a station in the Antarctic. Science remains the key currency in Antarctica, and to maintain a territorial claim, you need to be active within it. By exploring more of this region, scientists can better understand how our world works.
we can sail further west of Mawson than we've gone before, visit seabird colonies that have never ever been visited, but have the largest breeding population of some seabirds on the planet. That's exciting. No one has been to these places. This is a continent dedicated to science, a barometer for climate change, but it's not immune to strategic competition. This ship is not just about research, it's about maintaining Australia's influence in one of the most important regions on Earth. Henry Bellow, ABC News, Antarctica.